You shamed me, she tells Christine, grabbing her hair and muttering curses in her ear. Christine fights back, and they fight for a long time until Christine slams her car into a tree. Another one sends the witch flying into the front seat. The woman does not give up though and tries to bite her face even though she lost her fake teeth. Christine pushes her away and Ganesh finally puts her fake teeth back in. She comes back to attack Christine when she shoves a ruler into her mouth. She pushes the woman out of the car, which makes her even more angry, so she breaks her window. Ganesh pulls a button off Christine's coat, puts a Lamia curse on it, and gives it back to Christine. She tells Christine that she will soon be the one begging for help. Later Clay picks her up from work, and when they pass by a shop with a fortune teller, he does not like the idea because he does not believe in it, but he pays for the session anyway. The seer, Rim Jess, takes Christine's hand and sees right away that one of her buttons is missing. When strange things happen in his shop, he just stares into space. Then he takes her hand, and he gets scared when he sees the powerful demon she was cursed with. He tells Christine and Clay to leave with a full return, but he still tells Christine what he saw when she asks him about it. He tells her that someone has cursed her. On the way home, Clay tries to reassure her that Rim Jess is a con artist and that nothing he said should make her scared. Christine is at home with her kitten that night when strange things start to happen. The house. It cracks and crunches like someone is trying to get in, and then all the windows close at once. Open, scaring the little kitten too. Her house looks like it is possessed, and she sees a demonic image in the shadows that attacks her. Later, Clay comes over to take care of her, but he does not believe Christine when she says it was not Ganesh who broke into her house. He calls a doctor to check on her, who says it is just stress-related paranoia. Christine is sleeping when a fly starts flying around her and gets into her mouth, waking her up. Ganesh is lying down next to her. She goes after Christine again and tries to bite her face off. Then she throws up disgusting things. Christine wakes up next to Clay from her nightmare and tells him that she could not wake up. Clay takes her to work after she wakes up from the dream and tells her not to bother old ladies again. Stu comes over as soon as she sits down at her desk and asks her to teach him about banks. When he sits down and she starts to tell him about the problem, his hand changes into Christine stood up and told him to get his hands off the old woman's hand when he reached for her hand. Off her desk. The phone rings and when she answers it, blood starts to drip from her nose. When her boss comes over to help her, Christine starts to vomit blood all over him. She freaks out and leaves quickly, giving her co-worker plenty of room to steal. The important client files from her desk. Christine goes to find the old woman to beg for her help, just like she told her she would. When she gets to the house, it is not the old woman who answers the door, but her granddaughter, who says that her grandma told her that Christine would come. She tells Christine that she is not wanted there, but when Christine begs for help, the granddaughter comes to her aid, lets her in. Christine walks in, and the granddaughter tells her where to find Ganesh. Just then, a group of people shove Christine into the house and laugh. They are actually at Ganesh's wake, which Christine finds out when she falls on top of the dead woman. The table it was on breaks, sending both of them down, with the body landing on top. Christine, leaking something nasty into her mouth. When a few men grab the body to take it off Christine, it grabs her hair and rips a piece of it from her head. Ganesh's granddaughter tells her that she deserves everything that is happening to her. Christine goes back to see the seer, who tells her that what is bothering her is the lamia, or the black goat, which is called only to do the darkest things. For the first three days, the Lemia looks like a bad spirit that torments its target and tries to kill them. Then it comes for the soul of the person who owns the cursed thing. Christine remembers that it was the button, which makes Ram Jess take a step back. He tells her that as long as she owns the cursed object, the Lamia will still come to take her to hell. Christine asks how she can get rid of the curse, and the seer says she could try to appease the demon with an offering. She will not do something so disgusting, but she takes the book he gives her anyway. Rim Jess tells her that she will be shocked when it comes for her, would be willing to do. Later, as her kitten meows at her, she is reading the book when she hears the cracks and crunches of the Lamia in her house again. The demon's shadow starts to follow her around stronger than it did before. Christine goes up the stairs to her room, and it follows her there. She locks the door and calls Clay, but he does not answer. Lamia's hooves can be seen in front of the door, and Ganesh's face is screaming at Christine. Suddenly, Lamia's shadow starts to change into arms and reaches for Christine. She barely escapes its grasp and tries to go out the window. But the demon is there too, scaring the life out of her. 
It grabs her and spins her across the room, then throws her into the opposite wall. Christine cannot take it anymore. She gets a knife and calls to her cat. She does something she never thought she would do. She kills the kitten while crying. When she is done hiding it in her yard, Clay comes over and sees that she is covered in blood. Sweater. When she says it is tomato juice, he believes her. Still, he thinks they should put off the dinner they have planned with his parents. Night, because of all the bad things that have been happening to her recently. Christine is sure that her sacrifice has made it worth it for them to go. Christine puts on a nice dress that Clay likes, and the two of them go to the dinner happy that everything has worked out. When Clay introduces Christine to his parents, his mom gives the girl a hard time right away, looking at the cake she made for them with disgust. Still, the mom takes the cake and goes to the dining room with the rest of the family. The Cuba, their cat, hisses at Christine, possibly knowing what she did and that she has a bad attitude. Clay's mom does not understand why their sweet cat would act like that around someone like that. Clay tries to talk up Christine's accomplishments at the dinner, but his mom makes fun of him anyway. Christine talks for a long time about what she does as a loan officer, but that does not change the fact that Christine tells the woman the truth about her family and her mom's drinking problems. The woman's mother says that her father was also an alcoholic, but she never had the courage to admit it. She respects Christine for being honest and having courage. As they start to talk and laugh at dinner, a slice of Christine's pie is brought out. Christine hears the lamey again near the door. She asks Clay if he heard anything, but he hasn't. When Christine goes to eat her piece of cake, she sees a fly inside it. In the piece, an eye pops up. She pokes it with a fork, and goo and blood spill out all over the plate. Even when the cake eats her fork, Christine still acts like everything is fine. Then Clay's mom asks her something she did not understand, and she gave the wrong answer. Clay tells her she is wrong. When she finally takes a bite of the cake, she chokes on it and coughs up a fly, which is enough to make her parents stop eating it. Then, all of a sudden, she heard a terrible noise and banging on the door, so she grabbed her gun. She grabs a glass and throws it at the door, yelling for people to leave her alone. Clay gets her to calm down, and she says she wants to leave. She storms out of the dining room. Clay's mom tells him not to follow her into the room because she is sick. That night, she goes back to the seer and stomps all over his shop, telling him that she has bad news. Did what she was told. Ranjas tells them that they are dealing with elusive and powerful forces, and that there are no promises when it comes to dealing with them. He tells her that she needs to talk to the monster and convince it not to take her soul. He asks someone he knows for help. Christine does not believe him, so he tells her that Lamia will come for her after three days. He also tells her that the woman he knows who can help her will need a lot of money because she would be putting herself in danger from the demon. Christine asks how much, and he tells her she needs to pay $10,000 in cash. But the next day, Christine goes to work to talk to her boss about an advance she would like to get for the assistant manager's job. He tells her that the important deal with the client was canceled and that the bank's branch is going to have a lot of problems because of it. In short, she will not get the raise, but if the job opens up, she can apply for it. Stu will understand. Christine leaves work and starts taking everything she can sell from her house. As she is getting some things from her shed, Ganesh's spear attacks her and shoves its fist down her throat. Christine drops an anchor on its head, and its eyes go flying all over her face, but then they disappear. Clay comes to Christine's house and tells her that he paid Ram Jess for her even though he does not believe in anything. He says that he wants to help her in any way he can because he cares about her. It was built in a place where certain forces come together to make a doorway. Between our world and theirs to be open so that they can come into ours. They all sit down at the table and Sean's helper, Milosh, brings in a goat to be eaten, part of the training. Sean tells them that when the demon shows up, they have to trap it inside the goat. Christine will need to put her hand on the animal and Milosh will then kill it. Sean starts the session by saying that everyone needs to be open. Ram Jess tells Christine that she needs to ask the dead to join her spirit and help her. If she does not believe in what she is doing, it will not work. She keeps telling him, I want the dead to come into my soul. As they say the words and Sean sings, the session goes on. When she feels the spirits, the session is over. Now that they have opened the door, different ghosts are coming into the room. But Lania is still missing. Christine sees them in the room until Sean sends them all away. She then tells them that Lamia is in the room. They can see and hear that it is coming into the room. It takes over Sean's body all of a sudden and tells them so. 
When Ram Jazz asks it what it wants, it says it wants Christine's soul. The girl still says she did not make the hard choice to take out the loan. But the seer shuts her up and asks the monster how they can stop it from taking the soul of a small person. Woman. Christine tries to put the medium's hand on the goat for the first time, but Lamia laughs at her. When she goes for Christine, she finally puts her hand on the goat, moving the Lamia there and making it even more angry. When Mylosh comes over with a knife to kill the goat, it says that she tricked it. It bites his hand, putting the Lamia back into Milosh. Ram Jess tries to get rid of it when it goes after Christine, but it just strikes him instead. Then it dances on top of a table that is on fire. The seer tells it to leave again, but it beats him again. Lamia can finally go after Christine, but tells her it does not like her cat. Ram Jess wakes Sean up, and she finally gets the spirit out of Milosh and out of the room. Christine thanks her, but the woman has a heart attack and they have to call an ambulance. The seer tries to save Sean in the meantime, but she still dies. Ram Jess tells Christine as her body is being taken away, but Sean did not reject her. Lamia forever, but only from that session on. He tells her that the Lamia will come for the owner of the evil thing at the end of the night. Object. The only thing she can do is give him the object, which is something he did not want to tell her before as a gift. Since Clay is her home, she loses the package with the button in a pile of papers. But when she looks through them, she thinks she has found it. Christine tells him to meet her at the train station in the morning when he takes her home. So they can go on a trip. At night, she cannot sleep because she is thinking about who she could give the button to as a gift. At first, she wants to give it to Stu, but when the time comes, she changes her mind. Her thought. All of a sudden, she has an idea and goes back to room Jess. Christine asks if she can give the evil thing to a dead person, and after he tells her that she can after she does a little study. She drives to the cemetery and digs up Ganesh's grave. Then she rips open the wooden box to see what is inside. Christine tries to put the package in the hand of the dead body at first, but she can't. It seems like it is still fighting with her, so she uses a shovel to open its mouth, tells the gods about the gift, and steps the envelope down Ganesh's throat. After all of that, she almost drowns in the grave, where rainwater has gathered. Christine gets herself out of there and thinks she has solved her problem. The next day, as she gets ready to meet Clay at the train station, her boss leaves. A voice message about Stu. He says that Stu wanted to take Christine's important client and broker a deal with another bank. Because of this, Christine's boss will be promoting her to assistant manager. He gives her the envelope with the button back all of a sudden. The night before, she took his coin envelope from his car by mistake. 